Hello and welcome to Geek at Play Studio Tutorials. In this series we continue exploring epic landscapes. But before we start working on our sceneries, let's look on some options and settings that we can preset so it make our work more interesting and pleasant. We will work with the as a demo with V8 Extreme. It's going to be applied to V6 and 7. Uh, mostly no different will be in some stuff what we're creating. And if it will be different between versions, I will show you what is um, how different it is. Again, this is V8. So let's go first set up our units and uh, clipping and memory options. And we'll go to File and click on our option screen. And here in a general preferences, we actually won't modify anything at this point. Except if you have a um, poser, you can configure the location of your poser file. Let's go to display options. At display options, couple things what I want mostly emphasize. One, it is the option says limit open gel polygons. By default, you can see it said 1 million of the polygons. And I do like increase. But again, that is based on your video card. For example, if you have a more available memory, you can increase it. And what is actually this is does polygons. For example, when you're creating a scenery and you put a lot of trees inside with a lot of polygons, and when your maximum polygon is reached, your system start converting them to gray shaded boxes, so you don't actually see objects anymore. And sometimes it's hard to work. In many cases, your video card probably can handle much more. So for me, I'll just create 50 million polygons. As, as well, if you want to preview dynamic ecosystem, by default it's going 150. Um, you don't actually need to increase size of this. What it does is just give you upfront view of the ecosystem when you populate in kind of preview. Uh, default number, it just works very well for this. Okay, let's go next to click on unit and coordinates. A couple things right here you can modify. One, it's display unit. Currently it says it's matrix by default, automatic, and you can switch to imperial, foot, feet, or inches, or can go directly. Include it there on unique view units. By default I like work with metric system and I just keep it same. The other thing snapping to the grid resolution. Uh, what's happening when you create object and you press and hold down shift button and start dragging or rotating. This is um, what is this each step will be. So currently it says 1 meter and rotation 15 degrees. So I will leave this as default for that. Couple things I want to just modify its work coordinate system. I like when it's a Z is distance away and Y is up so I will switch that way. On that case when we have it Z index, it's meaning um, depth on that location, and rest I'll just leave it as default. So let's click OK. And till we're in this grid, what I was trying to show you, okay, let me select a cube, for example. You can notice right here cube, and if I hold down and press shift button and start dragging, you can see it's kind of snapping. And now it's snapping with one meter kind of resolution. So one square. It's about 10 meters by 10 meters. And when you start working, it does help you. As well, when you start rotating and you hold shift, and you can notice it's kind of snapping, so rotating in 15 degrees. In that case, you can easy kind of locate it more precision with horizontal if you want to turn around. The next thing, so what I want to adjust, it's inside the view. So in right here in Apple main camera view, we right click to our display, we'll go to the frame guide. And the frame guide, I like to enable uh, save frames, it's work mostly if you create animation or movie for the TV. And what's happened with some TV, they have it over scan. Over scan, it's mean some areas may not display it on some televisions. Um, in many cases, it's not relevant anymore because almost everything or LCD or going to more digital, but they still have it. The one what I want to enable, it is a display field grid and mostly 4x3. You can leave it other ones or we can disable those ones. And what this does, if you notice right here on the screen, 
we have this gray kind of looking lines and it does help us when we start create a composition because in many cases what you want to do you want to have it, your um, screen take it approximately one-third here or two-third so you kind of will guide it use those lines to properly realign and positioning your camera preset which is make um, more balanced creating image okay so this is couple things that we want to preset um, till we go ahead and start using other uh, jump into creating new scenery remember couple things one always save your work create different projects and it does help when you will create them in a steps incrementally so on that case when you need to create um, come back to some revisions you can go back to this until we actually in V8 a couple things I want to show you here so we have a few extra minutes it is main change from V7 to V8 what we'll notice it will be in our terrain editor and you can notice we have a different um, kind of effects now we have a 3d we can actually modify our terrain not just in 2d's but in many our tutorials we're going to use the terrain not the 3d ways so in that case it's all can be applied easy for v6 and v7 okay thank you for watching this tutorial and uh, our next we start jumping and creating beautiful landscape terrains